Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to assign properties to structural geometry in STAD Pro. In this video, we are going to be focusing on assigning the offset specification to your structural members. In the mathematical model, assumptions are made that do not necessarily reflect the actual conditions on the physical structure. One of these assumptions relates to the actual start and end locations of the member. To correctly model the behavior and location of structural members, you can use the offset specification. Now we can use the offset command for a couple different scenarios. The first scenario we're going to take a look at is by using the rigid offset specification to model a rigid end zone. Beams and columns are modeled as line elements in STAD Pro, and they're assumed to meet at a point in space defined by the intersection of their center lines. By comparison, in the physical structure, a beam might be attached to the face of column and not to the center line of support. Now this may create a rigid zone at the connection where very little relative deflection will occur between the face of support and the center line of support within this zone. Therefore, in the physical structure, the beam may behave as though as it connects to the column face as opposed to the column center line. However, in the mathematical model, the length of the beam is treated as though it spans from a center line to center line of column. Now, if the size of the rigid zone is significant with respect to the span length of the beam, then you may want to incorporate these effects into the mathematical model. The member offset specification provides a convenient way to account for these effects by declaring that the beam star or end faces are at a certain distance away from the center line of column. Now the length of a member offset, and therefore the size of the rigid end zone, can be a size based on engineering judgment. Member offsets may be modeled in any direction relative to either the local or global coordinate system. Let's now turn our attention to our sample model. And to better understand the way our members are modeled in the default condition, we're going to take a look at the three-dimensional view. In my ribbon toolbar, I'll now select the View tab and then go to the 3D render icon. And here I can zoom in to see that my concrete beams are currently modeled to the center line of concrete column. Now for this particular model, I'm going to assume that the distance between the face of support and center line of the support is quite rigid. So I'm going to use an offset command in order to account for that in my mathematical model. So that's going to be accomplished through a beam specification. So in your workflow page control area, you're going to select your specifications page. And up in your ribbon toolbar, we're going to select our specification tab. Now our columns are modeled as 16 inch by 16 inch members. So I want to create a rigid end zone that's 8 inches long. That'll be the distance from the center line of column to my face of support. So I'm going to come up in the ribbon toolbar and select the beam option and select the offset. I need to define my offsets for my starting and ending end separately, and we'll start with our starting end. Now you can reference an offset from either your global or local position, and I'm going to select my local axis, and I'm going to apply an offset of 8 inches from the starting end of the member for my local x-axis, which the local x-axis points along the length of the member. We'll go ahead and click the Add button, and then I'm going to finish this off by doing it again for the ending end of the member. And this time I'm going to go with my local axis, the end of my member, and this time I'm going to do a negative 8 inches to basically shorten the length of the member. We'll go ahead and click the Add button again. Now that we've entered our specifications, we're ready to assign them to our concrete beams. To do this, I'm going to highlight my first specification. I'm going to go to the Select tab in my Ribbon Toolbar, and I'm going to click on my Group Command. Here I'm going to select my Concrete Beams, and I'm going to finish this off by assigning it to the selected members. I'm going to repeat this process for the End Offset item as well. Now if I wanted to see what that looks like in three dimensions again, I can go ahead to the View tab in my Ribbon Toolbar and take a look at a 3D rendering. And 
And here you can see that my members have been pulled back to the face of support. Again, you should use engineering judgment to determine what your length of your rigid end zone should be. Now the next scenario, which we're gonna take a look at for using the offset command is to use it to correctly model our working points or our tops of beams correctly. If we were to take a look at our sample model, we would be able to see that our where our members are intersecting at joints is actually along the centroids of the members. Now, if this is not necessarily how you're going to be constructing it in the field, you may want to use the offset command in order to reflect the true geometry that you're going to have. Now, let's go ahead and return to a three-dimensional view of our structure and take a look at how our beam members are currently being modeled. Now the actual beams and columns of a physical structure are represented by lines in the mathematical or computer model. When a member is modeled, the line that represents the member is drawn at the centroid of the member and it spans from center line of support to center line of support. Now the offset command might be useful in order to adjust the elevation of our beams. For example, if I were to take a look at this upper level, I would notice that the centroid of my beams is reaching the centroid of my girder, which is reaching the top of column elevation. Now, if I am going to be constructing this where the top flanges of my beams are going to match my top flange of my girder, which are going to match my top of column, I'll need to use the offset command. So let's go ahead and exit out of the three-dimensional view and assign that type of geometry. Now my beam members in this model are 14 inches deep and my girders are 18 inches deep. And you will need to know the elevation or the depths of your members in order to correctly apply the offset specification. Now that we're ready to assign this specification, we're going to go up to our ribbon toolbar and click on the, the specification tab and we're going to find our beam specification. And here we're gonna find our offset command. Now we're going to define the starting and ending offsets separately. And we're going to use for this exercise, the global axis direction. All of my beam and girders are horizontal elements. So I'm going to be referencing them to the global Y axis. And I'm basically going to push for my beams. I'm gonna push them down seven inches. That will be the depth from the centroid up to the top flange of the member. So I'm going to move them down seven inches. We'll click the add button and I'm going to repeat this process for the end of the members. And I'm going to do the same thing for my girders. They're a little deeper so I will need a different offset command for those. And we'll bring those down nine inches. We're now ready to assign these specifications. So let's go ahead and start with our steel beams. I'm gonna highlight the first specification. I'm gonna to go to my select tab in my ribbon toolbar and find my group command. And here we're gonna find our steel beams option and I'm going to click assign. I'll do the same thing for the ends of the members. Next, let's go ahead and assign our other specification to our steel girders going to unselect steel beams, select my steel girders, and then finish this off by clicking assign. Now let's go ahead and take a look to see what this looks like in three dimensions. Again, I'm going to go to my view tab in my ribbon toolbar and click on my 3D rendering icon. And if I zoom in, I will be able to see that my top of girder matches my top of column, which matches my top of beam elevation. Now at some point through your design phase, if the depths of your members change, you may need to come back and manually um, readjust your offsets as required. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.